I made $20,000 in just four months of in Canada. Keep watching to find out. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Somi here again. If this is your first time, thank you so much for clicking. I hope you consider subscribing to my OGs. Thank you so much for always coming back. I see you guys in the comments, in the likes, everywhere in my IG. I see you guys everywhere. Thank you so much for the love and support. And I hope the new year is going well for everybody. Yeah, 2022, it's kicking in. It's kicking in, guys. <laughs> so I hope it's going well for you guys. And um, I'm going to be continuing my series, which I mentioned in my last video. If you haven't watched my last video, definitely go watch it. I share with you guys why you should move to Canada in 2022. And in this video, I'm going to be answering one of the major questions a lot of people ask before they go to Canada or when they're in Canada. Everyone asks this question. Can you as an international student pay your tuition yourself? <laughs> so I'm gonna give you my two cents on this question. There are loads of videos on this, so and my opinion is a little bit different from what I see out there a lot. So, well, if you want to know <laughs> if you can pay your tuition yourself in Canada, yo, then keep on watching. So, can you pay your tuition yourself as an international student? Hmm, okay. So, let's start with the basic, basic of all. The average tuition in Canada is around $15,000. That's the average. There are some that are less, there are some that are more. Like mine is <laughs> more, is in the 20s, okay, in a year. So if anyone out there is trying to help your girl, no problem. But yeah, my tuition for a year is is 20 something thousand but the average tuition in canada is around fifteen thousand dollars so we're going to be working with that in this video since it's the average right and then you have to think about minimum wage how much is the minimum wage in your province so different provinces have different minimum wages bc where i am is 15.20 dollars 15 dollars 20 cents right and ontario is about 15 quebec is about 13. i wrote it down here so let me just look so ontario is 15 um bc is higher of course and in my next video i'm going to be showing you guys why you should move to bc okay so stay tuned for that <laughs> um manitoba is about 11.95 when i saw that i was like really 11.95 but thinking about it i've heard about how manitoba is affordable and all of that so i guess it's understandable why you would be paying someone 11.95 dollars per hour i think it's the same in newfoundland newfoundland is about 11 point something um quebec is 13.50 so it goes on and on and on there are other provinces bc is not the highest i think the highest is yukon or one of the northern provinces um so you have to know the minimum wage for the province you're going to move to or the province you're in to help answer that question as well so what is the average tuition and what is the minimum wage of where you're living so those two um those two are the major factor to determine if you can pay your tuition okay so now that we've gotten the two major factors out of the way let's go back to the question can you pay your tuition yourself as an international student in canada mind you international fees is way different from domestic fees the canadian students pay in my school movies for example canadian students would pay like 300 or 500 for a course while an international student would pay 2000 for the same course right and that's like a course anyways so can you pay your tuition yourself and my answer is yes hold on <laughs> yes you can but not all of it that is my straightforward answer to anyone who asks me that question yes you can pay your tuition or you cannot pay all of it at least not without a mental breakdown physical breakdown emotional breakdown and probably loss of study 
status in Canada okay so I'm going to start listing the reasons or how you can pay your tuition yourself here's the thing before you even come to Canada most schools ask for tuition deposits you should absolutely do that it saves you a whole lot most schools will ask for you to pay the first semester tuition before you come some might say pay half or whatever but my biggest biggest advice in this video is pay your full first semester tuition pay that deposit they're asking you to pay some schools require you to even get your final letter of approval some schools don't but i tell you absolutely pay the first semester school fees and the second semester school fees that is really really important so kind of like pay the first year so it's important for you to do that because you don't want to be stressed out you don't want to be in debt you don't want to come here and then you're trying to find a job so fast and then what if you don't find a job quickly that's a factor if you're coming here empty-handed not paying your first semester tuition like what if you don't find a job and then like what if your job is minimum wage you're gonna get to that and then you don't even have enough to pay rent or to 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 gather your tuition so important factor yes you can pay your tuition yourself but not the first semester and not the second semester and in addition to that have your first three months rent ready if you know that you're not going to be getting support from home before you come first semester second semester and three months rent ready if you can get those three things ready when you come here you're setting yourself up for greatness honestly that is really important if you have those i feel like you're good you're good to go if you know that okay if i land i get a job maybe under a month or two i already have my three months rent ready when you start working you're saving up for your third semester fourth or fifth semester you're not saving up for the next semester do you get the point and then you're not saving up for your rent you're saving up for the fourth month rent okay so this is really all about planning and setting yourself up you have to plan get that first semester second semester and three months rent ready and my answer to you is yes you can absolutely pay your tuition yourself after you've gotten these three things ready because if you set these three things up you're good to go in my humble and honest opinion and um it's not just an opinion i'm sorry that was a mistake scratch that it's my experience number one and not only that everyone i know who pays their tuition themselves they didn't pay the first semester and second semester themselves everyone i know who is paying their tuition it sets you up it, it helps kickstart you like it puts you on a good pedestal it puts you on a good level to help yourself pay your tuition so absolutely have those three things ready to go so let's go on to the second point on how you can actually pay your tuition as an international student yourself so this tip is so important i've mentioned it in some other videos i'm going to mention it again don't work a minimum wage job at the beginning of this video i mentioned some minimum wage in bc and the other provinces don't do it do not do it it's already hard enough trying to make money pay your bills pay your tuition so you don't want to make a minimum wage because it's too little you're restricted in a lot of ways you have so much bills you can't work more than 20 hours during school session so there's no point doing it so working a minimum wage is just double hardship and we don't want that over here it's okay if you start out with a minimum wage job but don't stay there if it's the first job you get keep looking for other jobs that are higher than the minimum wage there's so many jobs out there for international students okay that pay way way higher than minimum wage and it doesn't even have to be a professional job like don't think it's, it's not it's not too too huge of a task right like there are jobs out there for you as an international student to make more money than the minimum wage so don't do it I know I'm bringing this so hard if you haven't got my video on the top five jobs for international students 
definitely go watch that it's going to help you you can get ideas on kind of jobs to apply for to get higher than the minimum wage and i know it may seem like okay so what job will get me there there are so many jobs now employers are looking for people people are retiring people are leaving their their jobs you know so there are there are job opportunities so absolutely seek for those ones that will pay you higher and yeah if you're going into a more professional field you can always negotiate your salary as well so do not stick to minimum wage okay it's okay if you're doing that now just try to look for more that's if you actually need the money if you don't need the money if you don't mind getting minimum wage that's fine but this video is not for you this is for people who are looking to pay their tuition themselves so aim higher okay the third way you can pay your tuition yourself is by getting transfer credit so a lot of people don't tend to know about this you know and different institutions different universities or colleges might have different ways they work around this but from my um, institution my, my university and some other universities i know of you can get something called transfer credit so for example if you studied say computer science as your undergrad and you're coming here to do an MBA or a postgraduate diploma course there are some courses that you would have to do that are similar to what you did back in your undergrad for computer science maybe financial accounting manager accounting um, some information technology system courses things like that so you can get transfer transfer credits so what you do is send the syllables from your from your former institution where you got your degree to your current university here and then they can transfer the credit for you so you don't have to do those particular courses and if you can get some courses off your program it reduces the amount of tuition you have to pay do you understand me because maybe maybe you have to do 20 courses to complete your program if you get transfer credit it reduces to maybe 17 or 18 or 15 courses i know someone that has gotten like five six courses off her program so that reduces the amount of money she has to spend on tuition and she's good to go right so if you can get transfer credit if the, the program you're doing is similar to your previous program check your your previous syllables your curriculum compare it to what you what you have to do and if they're similar courses or the same courses then absolutely um request for transfer credit sometimes you have to request it sometimes the tuition the um, university might be nice enough to even tell you that you can get transfer credit some wouldn't so you can talk to the advising talk to the admin um, department in your school and ask about transfer credit it's super super important a lot of people know about this so okay thank me thank me for telling you okay so you can absolutely get transfer credit it reduces your tuition even if it's by 5k 2k 4k no matter the amount it still reduces your tuition and you don't have to pay as much okay so that's one way to ensure that you can pay your tuition yourself by cutting costs okay so now the fourth way you can pay your tuition as an international student and i cannot stress this enough is take full i repeat take full advantage of scheduled breaks and holidays like this is so so important this is where you actually make the money for your tuition anything you work outside of this when you're working during school time 20 hours that's for your rent that's for your feeding your bills but the holidays the scheduled breaks that's when you actually make money so these are holidays like christmas christmas holiday um the summer which lasts for about four months that's a lot of time to work and earn money um scheduled breaks during school time um because there's some breaks you can get in in between school like my school um in february there's a week it's called reading week so that whole week is free it's a break it's actually a holiday so you can work full time in that week before school starts so any holiday any break that you that you see like this grab it hold it take full advantage of it because like i said that is where the money is made the money isn't made when you're in school just working 20 hours 
it's made where you're able to spread your wings and walk as much as you want and that was how I was able to make almost $20,000 in just four months. So let me tell you how, well the how I've already listed it, I have a job, here's what a minimum wage, I work that job in the summer, so four months which is May, June, July, August these four months and like when I sat down to actually calculate how much I made in those four months I was actually shocked because I didn't know I knew I could make money but I didn't realize how much I had made and I calculated it and I wrote it down I was like yo that is crazy so the grand total what I made in May, June, July, August of 2021 was $19,137.75 we see that as long, okay? So I made almost twenty thousand dollars. It was intense. In May, I'm gonna break it down for you guys so you guys understand. Um, you kind of get paid every two weeks, okay? And in May, I made three thousand four sixty seven point forty six. This is so long. Oh my god! In June, I made um three thousand eight hundred and ninety three point ninety nine. In July. July and August, like I made the most because July had like five weeks from what I saw. So it's July I made the most because it had five weeks. I made six thousand seven hundred and two point forty eight cents, and then August was five thousand seventy three dollars and eighty two cents. I know I'm giving you guys, I'm giving you guys this detail so you can understand and know that it's possible and you can do it which is why I'm sharing my account details <laughs> yeah so it's, it's crazy I literally wrote it down here I just scrambled it made the grand total everything so you can do it as well okay that's why you have to take full full advantage of your holidays that's where the money is absolutely made and you can do it as well you, you can't make this kind of money during school because you're not working more than 20 hours during the summer i was working non-stop hours upon hours upon hours okay so that's why i say your tuition would actually be made during the holiday not during school time okay okay so we're almost there guys i'm almost there we have two more tips on how you can actually Pay your tuition so the fifth reason or the fifth tip is get a second job and if you're in Canada now right now and you have just one job now is the time to start searching for that second job because summer is approaching so I, I mentioned this in one of my resetting vlog and I mentioned that I actually have two jobs one of the jobs I don't work there often or I barely work there during school period I take up shifts there I work there during the holidays okay so I saved that second job for the holidays so the summer the Christmas I combine it with my main job to work more hours so you have to get a second job because sometimes the um, you, when you have one job they don't give you enough hours they could give you maybe just 20 hours during the holiday I'm talking about for the holiday now and 20 hours doesn't cut it when you're on holiday like you have to be working more constantly almost every day during the holiday and one job might not be able to give you those hours which is why you should get a second job so you can combine them work two jobs during the holidays because four months like summer is four four months so having one job that doesn't give you enough hours it's not it you cannot survive on that you cannot pay your tuition with that is even rent might be hard for you at that point okay so get a second job combine it so you can get more hours and work more during the holidays get that second job like i know people like see yo this this life that's why this international student life is hustle 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 like coming in i know i knew that like my first two years i'll just have to put my head down i'll work really hard and then i can relax later right so sometimes you come back from an eight hour shift and then you have to go to the next um work maybe your second job under eight hours then come home rest start the routine again i know it sounds really hectic and exhausting but it's all about pushing your head down and putting in the work and eventually you can relax like i i worked a lot like you can see i earned 
an off money during the summer and I walked a lot but I still had some fun. I traveled like two times during the summer in 2021 so you can still take time out for self-care even when you have a lot of um, work and you have two jobs that you're juggling in between definitely know when to take rest time listen to your body and know what it needs but at the same time just know that you have to put in the work right if you if you have a lot of bills if you have tuition to pay just know that you have to put in the work and the hours to be able to gain that because a lot of the jobs that we do as international students are hourly pay so any hour you're not working you're not getting paid it's not a salary based um kind of system where whether you call in sick or you don't call in sick you're still getting your full salary at the end of the month these are hourly jobs that you have to be there per hour for your money to count okay so get a second job for the holidays right get a one that during school time you can cut down the hours and not necessarily work there but holidays you need a second job like i have a lot of friends right now that are looking for their second job because summer is approaching and they know that they need a second job to to cover up to fill up the spaces because you have a lot of time four months imagine the job you have to just give you maybe eight hour shifts for like three days or four days you still have what are you going to do with the other days of the week, the other hours of the week? So the second job is absolutely important for the holidays. So absolutely do that if you know you want to pay your tuition. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so my final, final tip for you guys is obviously very obvious. Is live an affordable lifestyle. Totally live below your means. Don't go of above and beyond in your spending cut down in any way that you can the biggest biggest cut down you need to make is in your rent rent is a huge huge factor because that's something you have to pay every single month so you have to find an affordable place if you're staying in an apartment where you have to pay monthly find an affordable place to stay if you're in school campus or well, good for you i guess you're just paying one year depends sometimes school campus is a bit more expensive than apartments so just weigh your options find out okay is the campus cheaper than me renting a place when i rent a place where are the affordable places to live in town absolutely research and know that you have to live below your means cut down on your groceries don't over shop go to the cheaper places you want to buy clothes go to second hand places they are really really cool second hand places are not bad or should I call it thrift shopping? When I say thrift shopping is more bougie, it's a bougie way to say it. Like this sweater that I'm wearing right now, it was thrifted. I got it from a thrift store. It's a crop top. It's it's really isn't it cute? It's cute. Do you know I got it from a thrift store? No. It's really nice. I actually thrift shop. Like when I first got Canada, I went to thrift shops a lot. I don't even go there now because they actually sell really good stuff. If you know the good thrift stores to go to in town, do your research, you'll find that you can find really good things at affordable prices. You don't have to break the bank to look good. No one is saying don't look good. Look good, you know. Just because you're not buying something expensive doesn't mean you have to look shabby. You can still look good in affordable things. So just cut your your coat according to your size. I hate that they changed that coat a bit. I hope I got the right one. So cut your coat according to your size. Yeah. Anyways, what they said to cut your cloth according to your size. Anyways, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> So absolutely live below your means, live an affordable lifestyle, like just know your pocket and know what you need and just plan yourself. You have to get really good at financial management, how much is your rent, how much is your groceries per month, how much are your bills, your phone bill and one another thing is phone bills because in Canada you pay phone bill every month, try to find an affordable phone bill, you don't be paying a lot of money like 70 something blah, blah blah every month on just phone bill where right? you can they are so there when i was in canada my phone bill was 33 dollars and like, every time i told people that they were so shocked but like how do you get 33 dollars per month because other people were paying 60 70 75 i'm like no i'm not i'm not doing that so um 33 dollars was my phone bill and it was so so sufficient for me for the first um for the first eight months or so when I was in Canada, then I then I changed later on 
I'm even paying cheaper now. Wait, it's me. I'm actually paying a cheaper phone bill right now. It's crazy. My phone bill is like 15 bucks per month. So you guys find affordable ways to live. Like you don't have to I'm not saying you should be scraping things and not eating or looking shabby. Look good. Don't I look good? I'm trying to look good. But I still live an affordable lifestyle, okay? So do what works for you, do what works for your pocket, actually. So if you follow these tips that I gave, I think and absolutely believe you can pay your tuition yourself. I'm not just saying it for saying sake, it's something that's being done, some of the people have done and are doing and they're going to do it. Well, so like I said, remember every tip that I said in this if you follow every tip in this in this video you can absolutely pay your tuition yourself. So the answer to your question is, again, yes, you can pay your tuition yourself, but not all of it. Okay? Alrighty, guys. So I told you guys going to go personal. I showed you guys my bank details. Can you imagine? Who would do that? Okay? So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I'll be in the comment section. I always answer questions in the comment section. So feel free to go down below and comment any questions you might have if you have more tips for people who need to pay their tuition absolutely leave that comment as well help everyone who wants to pay their tuition and if you feel like something i mentioned isn't accurate please correction is absolutely um appreciated so subtract add do that do all of that do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video and adios